I don't often do metaphors, but when I do, they are helpful. I don't know, but here we go. So I want you guys to think of this as a factory where we have our genetic variations. And this could be in the form of adaptations. mutations, mm -hmm. gene flow, mm -hmm. new gene combinations, mm -hmm. and those new gene combinations may be a result of meiosis, which we have talked about already. And specifically, when you're thinking about meiosis, I want you guys to think sexual reproduction, whereas mitosis is that asexual reproduction. So we have these methods of having genetic variation in our population. So again, adaptations, mutations, gene flow, and new gene combinations through sexual reproduction. I'm going to draw out a little funnel, because all of these are going to be funneled in to our little machine here that we're going to draw. And this machine that processes these genetic variations is natural selection. So natural selection is going to act on the adaptations the mutations, gene flow, and new combinations of genes and alleles. And what you're left with, or what's going to come out on this conveyor belt here, make a little wheel. Okay, what you're left with after natural selection has acted on the genetic variations are two main possibilities. The first possible product we have could be evolutionary change over time. The second is when natural selection acts on genetic variation, we can see the emergence of new species. Okay, so if we wanted a bigger view, here we go. We have genetic variations being acted upon by natural selection, which results in perhaps we have evolutionary change over time, or maybe we even have new species developing. 